What's going on guys? Welcome back to Evil Intoxicated episode number 52 here with Evil Eddie and Ted Check. What's going on, Ted? Hey Eddie, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man, and I have to say this is one of the most exciting episodes just focusing on the fights themselves. I think they really did a good job making it redemption. They gave it all they had. And uh, we're going to be talking about that in just a second here. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. we got the live chat going. Yep. Of course, that's Ted Check. I'm Evil Eddie. And if you guys have any questions, anything at all about tonight's episode, just let us know. And Ted is in control of the chat room. And then right after that, we're going to be focusing on some of the MMA news going around, some of the big headlines this week. On my birthday, it was announced Conor McGregor versus Mayweather. So we want to hear your take on that. And no. also, JDR gets stripped of the belt. And then Cyborg versus Anderson. So we got a lot to talk about, Ted. Let's start with Ultimate Fighter, Season 25, Episode 10. Ted, what was your first take on tonight's uh, show? Well, you know, you said that they uh, that they focused on the fights, and they did. But we, we also got, um, you know, another dose of the back and forth between Cody Garbrandt and Team Alpha Male. What's an episode of the Ultimate Fighter Redemption without that? You got to have the, the, the this going, you know, back and forth. And, you know, you... You did this to me, and you left us, and, you know, uh, no, I, I didn't leave you. You kicked me out, blah, 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 blah. How many times? It, it's kind of getting a little bit old. Um, I, I think I'll be happy when I don't have to look at uh, Justin Buchholz's face and, and the other guy there. Um, what's his name from Team Alpha Male? Night Train or uh, Room Service or what's his, what's his name? Um, you're talking about uh, Castillo. Yeah, Castillo. What, what the? Last call. Danny. I knew it was something like that. night train, you know, room service. Last call. Uh, you know what I mean? I just, I just, I just, I just get out. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just tired of the bickering. Yeah, yeah man. It's it's been like this all season, and you know what? TJ really opened it up, and I thought it was kind of rude because they were doing the weigh-ins, and then they just started going at it. Yeah, it was very disrespectful to uh, uh, who, uh, Jesse Taylor and uh, Hyder Hassan. Yeah, it, it was. It was. Well, you know what I say. I, I, I think that Buckholds should uh, should fight freaking Dwayne Bang Ludwig. I mean, this has been a conversation oh. that's been going around on uh, on all the internet sites here. So, that's, yeah, why, that's not? Like a, why not? A fun thing to uh, throw out there. Who do you think would win that, by the way, if we had uh, Buckholds first? Oh, Bang. my God. Um, geez, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, Ludwig has been out of it for a long time, you know? Um, so I, I, I don't know. Uh, he just, um, I don't know. He, he kind of doesn't, he can't kind of moves like an old man. You know what I mean? I, 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 and he, and he, you know what I mean? He, he seems like he's aged a lot since he left the game. Um, so I don't really, I, I like the guy. And I would want him to win. I just don't know if he could win. Well, you know what? Let's not forget that Dwayne was also one of the holders of one of the quickest knockouts in MMA. So, uh, you know, it, it would be an exciting fight. There's a lot of backs. There's a redemption fight right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, he, I mean, he's a great kickboxer. Um, that, that was his background. You know, before he got into MMA, he was a, he was a kickboxer. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you can see, you know, his, uh, his handiwork, you know, as far as, as, far as his teaching – in TJ Dillashaw. Oh, did you like uh, how they brought out the Killershaw shirts? Yeah, I love uh, that. They, they Killershaw shirts. I wanna. I gotta get me one of those, man. I, I like those shirts. You know what, Ted? You called it out too. You were like, uh, you know, when that season Ultimate Fighter was going on with Conor McGregor and stuff. You were like, TJ's kind of embracing being the snake. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why not? Why not? You know, uh, that just uh, continues to get under uh, Garbrandt's skin. And, and it, apparently, it's not that hard to do. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, tonight we had one of the uh, wild cards fight with uh, Hader Hassan going against Jesse Taylor, which we know is an amazing wrestler. Even Dana White was kind of brushing on it and kind of suggesting, you know, Hader should probably, you know, try to stay away from the wrestling and stand up most of the time. Right. But that fight ended really quick. Let's, let's jump right into that fight because it, it did seem like they did just kind of jump into it. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, they, they uh, you're right. They're, they're kind of, both of those guys are kind of one-dimensional. I mean, Hyder is a stand-up guy, and, and Taylor is a wrestler. And so it was basically what it boiled down to was, uh, you know, who could impose their will using their specific skill set. And, and, you know, Taylor 
He tried once for a takedown, uh, and then the second time was the charm. Second time he got the takedown and, uh, you know, um, worked for the rear naked choke and got it. I do have to say this. That was it. I I do have to say this. I, even though I don't want to say it, I have to. I was kind of happy that oh. Hater lost because I did hear rumors going around that Hater was going to be winning this whole season. So I hate when I find that stuff out, you know. So I was uh, kind of happy to find out that's not who won this season in a way. And uh, I'm not happy okay. that he lost, but I'm happy that that's not yeah. true and I still don't know who the winner was. Yeah, that, that kind of reminds me of, uh, I don't know how many seasons ago it was. Remember when we heard about this this mythical tough beast who was who was just putting guys in the hospital and we weren't sure who it was before the season started. Uriah Hall. And, <laughs> right. It turned out to be Uriah Hall, but a lot of people thought it was another guy. Uh, I think they thought it was a guy named Tor Trung. They thought it was him. And, yeah, so I was. Yeah, it's kind of the same situation. It, it turned out not to be who a lot of people speculated that it was. You know, that's but, the uh, downside of going into the MMA underground on the Internet there because there are a lot of rumors. We don't know if they're true or not. But Dana didn't say anything about it, and we've seen, uh, you know, we've kind of seen him react that way in the past couple of seasons when people have called out the winner, like last season when uh, DJ was supposed to be fighting for the belt or defending his title against right. uh, Tim Elliott. You know, everyone kind of right. ratted that out. Tim Elliott's going to be the winner. It kind of ruined the season. So that's why I'm. That's the only reason why I'm saying I'm happy that Hater lost. I mean, I've had Hater on my show right. here at Period of MMA. But you know what, Jesse, man, it doesn't surprise me that he won this fight. Well, no, I mean, uh, you know, he, he's uh, he's a very experienced guy. Um, Thirty wins, fifteen losses. So he's he's probably got um, probably got the most fights out of anybody, I I, I think, and um, looked to be in great shape. And you know, he is he's um, he's going to be tough to beat. You know what I mean? Like like we're saying, one dimensional guy, but. But how are you going to stop that takedown? You know what I mean? Yeah. Try. Just try. Try to beat him at that. You know what I mean? He, he, he's, uh, you, know, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, oh, my God. He's there was another bitch. guy. He's a nightmare. What's that? He's a nightmare to go against. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it might not, you know, like Hyder was saying, oh, fuck your wrestling. Well, the wrestling won. The wrestling and, and the jiu-jitsu. Um, you, you know what I mean? It's like you're going to you're gonna have to find a way to beat that. You're gonna, you're gonna have to find a way to uh, to work your own game. And and Ted, I do have to say, if anyone this season has the most drive or you know the best story of redemption, it has to be Jesse in a way because he went through that whole season of Ultimate Fighter that he was on, and he screwed it up because he got in his own way by acting like an idiot, right. going out and partying, kind of being like I'm the man. And Dana was the one to call him out, be like, you're not ready for this. So now I got to ask you, Ted. Not the man. <laughs> is he is he ready you, for it? Is he ready to take on that fame? Looking back at how he was acting, um, you know, when he went through that season, I think he is now. He he seems far more mature. Um, you know, he's got kids, and uh, um, yeah, he's 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 just uh, you know he's he's so much older. Um, so uh, yeah, I think I think he's ready. I think he is. So moving on, Ted, you know, I do have to point this out. There was only one fighter left, and he was the next fighter to fight on Cody's team. Cody, Cody's lost all of his fighters this season, every single one. Right. Yeah, no, that, well, that, was, that fight did it right there, right? Yeah. D yep. Didn't uh, uh, Dillashaw said, that's it, I've, I've cleaned him out uh, with, um, uh, you know, when, when, uh, when Hassan lost. You know, Ramsey was right? kind of... Yeah, yeah, yep, exactly. And, and you know what, Ted? Ramsey was kind of talking a little shit to uh, Cody Nolov there. He was like, you have to win fights, and you are what you eat. And you can tell it's uh, really eating at Cody. Cody gets mad at anybody for saying anything, you know? Oh, I know. Oh, my God. Yeah, he he, he does. Who what, Wasn't it uh, – you, you, so you're talking about uh, Ramsey Nijum. Yeah, yes. Nid, uh, Nid, did, was it Nijum who said something to him uh, during the coach's challenge or – or was it somebody else? Remember, somebody was somebody was giving him crap during that too. I it forget might, who that it might was. Have been, it might have been Ramsey that was. Uh... Yeah, he just can't. He can't take any ribbing. You know what I mean? Like it, he he just doesn't. I don't know. Everything gets under his skin. He's so he he seems to be a, quite the snowflake. You know, he's 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 very he's he's 
You have to be very kind and gentle with him. So getting <laughs> into this next fight, man, we had, uh, you know, James Krause versus, uh, you know, Ramsey, like we're right. talking about. And Ramsey was going out saying that, uh, you know, James is not ready for that deep water. Well, guess what? We actually saw the deep water as they went into that third and final round. Let's start with round one, Ted. Um, of course, James looked absolutely amazing in that very first round um, with the top control. He got right on right. top. And Ramsey was able to work off the bottom as well. I mean, he wasn't really losing any points. But I, let me ask you this really quick. Are they doing yeah. the new rules on this season of Ultimate Fighter, or is it old rules? That's a very good question yeah. because, okay, I, I heard a new wrinkle to that. Uh, I think it was Nijem who put one hand down. Okay, he had his feet planted, and then he, he was bent over, and he put one hand down. Not two, but one. Okay. And uh, that's, that's a nice wine glass, by the way. And uh, so he put one hand down. Ah, uh, yeah. And did you hear the ref? The ref says you have to put weight on it. Okay, so the we're ref going said back to, to him, the old rules. To... Or no, that's the new rules. You have to have weight on the hand. You can't just place it down. But no, the new rules is is all fours. The new rules is either palms or fists. What's this weight thing? I have never heard that before. Not even. The old rule was, I mean, you could put your you could put your pinky down. You didn't need weight. You just needed you just needed three points of contact. But this guy's saying you need to put weight on it. Weight on it? What do you mean? I've never I've never heard that. Have you? Well, they kind of brought it up in that fight with uh, Eddie Alvarez versus Dustin the Diamond. You know, they were they were kind of going back and forth about that. Was that the right thing to do? This and that. Um, no, th this is something new that they've been bringing up. You got to put weight on it, and it can't just be you placing your finger down. I, I I don't know. I got maybe I gotta ask Big John about that because uh, he'll answer you too. Yeah, he he's very good about that um, because that is that's a new wrinkle. I, I'm look. I don't want to say that the ref made that up, but <laughs> he, I, I don't know where he got that. I'm struggling here. I'm struggling. So so in that but, very uh, first round, you know, Ramsey was trying to escape, and like I was saying, he was doing really good from the bottom. He was even having a, the wrist control. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. from the bottom and was able to get back up with uh, two minutes and 30 seconds left. And then Ramsey landed a really nice knee and a couple of leg kicks that were pretty impressive. And you can tell that Krauts was getting a little slow, so I was getting a little worried about James there. But uh, you know what? He was looking for another takedown and ended up against the cage with just 90 seconds uh, left. Was able to get back up, and then James had this really weird heel kick. Like, he had him up against... Uh, the cage or whatever, Ramsey, and landed like, it was weird. He hit like the side of his foot to the chin of Ramsey, which you can tell he's a pretty flexible guy. Without a doubt, I had James winning that first round. What was your take on uh, round one there, Ted? Yeah, I had I had other highlights. That's really weird. I, I, I felt like I was listening to a different fight. <laughs> But no, no. I mean, and I'm not, I'm not doubting you. I just, it's, it's interesting how you can, how you can take away different things. Like I had that uh, Nijem uh, was lighting Kraus up, at, like in the early seconds of the fight. He, he landed quite a few times, and then Kraus with the takedown. Uh, Kraus took his back briefly. They, they got back up. There was another takedown by Kraus. I, I missed a lot in there. Probably what you saw, and then uh, spinning back fist to the neck. Yeah. Remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, and then he went into a jumping guard guillotine. Kraus did. Um, it, and, and that was kind of a theme. We saw that at least one more time where, where Kraus is, is uh, pulling guard, you know, kind of a jumping uh, guillotine, but can't, can't get it all the way sunk in. And then ends up in, on bottom in on a bad position. But, uh, no, I, I did think that Kraus did enough to win that round. Yeah, I, I do too. And you know what? The takedowns, I don't know if it, if it's the same way to you, but a takedown for me is like a huge thing for a fighter to show the advantage there, especially if you can hold him down and kind of muscle him out. Um, so I definitely gave that uh, first round. But you did make a, a great point. Ramsey did kind of light him up at the beginning of the fight. And like I was even saying, he was having some good control even off of his back. So uh, that could have went either way, but the judges definitely gave it to, uh, to James there. and I did too. So right. getting into the second round, this was big uh, for Ramsey. He really needed to really put it off there. And he was defending the takedowns, too. Yeah, did, did you hear? I think it was somebody from, from Ramsey's corner saying at one point, sit on his face. 
<laughs> I was like, <coughs> okay, um, you know, what, what, what are we talking about here? The north-south position or what? You know, Wasn't there anyway. something really funny that Cody yelled out earlier in the season that sounded completely wrong? It was like sexual, but he was he didn't mean it to be that. Oh, man. I don't know. This, this me did it. Sit on his face thing was, uh, I don't know, probably. Um, I don't know. I'd have to go back and, and, and look at it again. But, um, yeah, the, the second round I, I definitely gave to, uh, to Ramsey. Um, he, he did it. Krause did another one of those jumping into the guillotine. Um, but the, it went nowhere. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, Nijem had, had takedown, had a couple of takedowns, right? Yeah. Yep. And um, and a lot of control there. So, hence, the third round. You know, and I was even tweeting, guys, and if you haven't been watching the season Ultimate Fighter, this is your first time tuning in to Evil Intoxicated Recap for the Ultimate Fighter. Um, I've been live tweeting this whole time, and I kind of called it. I mean, Ted, I kind of pulled uh, a Ted check. I was looking at my watch, and I was like, you know what? There, there's time for a third round, and, and just based uh -huh, off uh -huh. the way I scored it. You know, I definitely saw it going in the third round. That's why when I saw the old, I was like, here we go. It, it, things are about to turn yep. up. This is the true redemption fight right here. These guys got to put it all on the table. And as we saw the bell ring to start this round off, it kind of seemed like these guys were trying to knock one another out, which wasn't smart to do because you can tell they kind of gassed right out uh, immediately after that. They were just swinging for the fence. If Ramsey was trying to do uh, these really crazy over overhands that just weren't landing. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I did the one takeaway that I had was, uh, I liked, uh, I liked Krause's jab. I thought he had a, I thought he had a, a you know, a, a good jab off, there that was off the, rhythm too. It was snapping, uh, snapping, uh, Ramsey Nijem's head back. So, yeah. uh, I thought, I thought that was nice, nice crisp jab there. Um, and, um, and then, uh, geez, I don't I, see. Okay. I got to admit to you. I was, I was getting a little tired. And I start. I was. I was nodding off to MMA. I was falling asleep. I, you know what I mean. And, and it's not. I don't mean. To, I, I hope I don't offend these guys because they were working hard. Yeah. Um, at one point, I know Kraus was on top. You know, he had top control. Um, so I, help me out here with the rest of it. <laughs> well, like I said, they were both looking for the knockout. They both got very tired. Yeah. But James was able to get on top and uh, was able to take Ramsey's back there. So I was like, okay, well, we got another two minutes and 30 seconds left. And then James gets right on top. I was like, it looks like you can seal, but in MMA, anything can happen. And then Ramsey gets the takedown, Ted, and actually mm. stuns James. And you could hear the corners yelling. He stuns. He's, he's finished. He's done. The yelling to the ref to kind of, you know, manipulate him, I guess. And uh, that was just with uh, 30 seconds left. James was able to escape and then looks for uh, – Looks for a takedown of his own and tries to submit him with 10 seconds left. And I think that's what really did it. James was able to get that second win there in that third yeah. round, despite the way that round started off. And uh, without a doubt, Ted, I wasn't even confused about this decision. I knew it was going to be going to James Krause. It's kind of upset ah, because Ramsey did do a great job in all of his fights. But James, man, he's just been looking amazing. Like you were bringing up with his jab. It was off rhythm. Like he would throw a jab, kind of trick you out, and then finish it off. Like he would kind of cut mm. an angle with it. So 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 uh, he had a feint in there as well, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, you know what was interesting is is I did see, you know, of of course, right as the episode ends, boom, they go right into tough talk because they don't want you to change the channel, they don't want you to turn it off. They go right into tough talk, and I always, you know, just go boom, you know. But right <laughs> before I did that, right before I went, mm, turn you off, uh, you ha they had. Um, they had Ramsey on, and he said he thought he won the fight. He said he was going for damage, not control. That's why. Um, and he thought that you, that Dad. was the key to victory. What's that? That's my next question. I got written down right here. I said, if this fight okay. were scored on damage, who would have won that? Well, uh, I mean, oh God, I mean, see, dam I mean, damage is, is something. It is something they take a look at. Uh, it is something that they consider, but uh, I forget how it ranks with. I got. I'd have to look back at the rules. You know what I mean? Um, as to, as to where it ranks with everything else. Uh, but um, I mean, yeah, Kraus Kraus got the got the worst of it as far as he he got bloodied up more 
more than more than uh, Nijum did, right? I think it was pretty even there. I think it was pretty even. I think that uh, you know Ramsey had a little more power for sure. He definitely had a little okay. more power yeah. behind his punches. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, especially um, in the uh, when was it the, the second round? I think no, no, first round. First round, he he, he had Kraus in trouble. I think at least maybe twice in in the fight. You know, kind of dazed. Had him dazed. I I don't know that Kraus ever had Nijum in that position. You know, I don't, I don't know no, that Kraus didn't. ever. Yeah, yeah. He, he he didn't he didn't really stun Nijum ever. Despite there was a really nice spinning uh, back fist, back elbow right. that he did land. Right, yeah, that was the second round. Yeah, we talked about that. That was oh no, it was the first round. Was that like at the end of the first round? It was, it was kind of more to the neck than the than the head. Um, yeah, he did have that, but uh, but he he never but but James Krause never stunned Ramsey Nijem the way that Nijem did him. So uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to look at that as far as damage as well, you know, did, did they define damage as you know when you when you've got somebody rocked? Is that damage? Uh, is damage just strictly blood, you know, cuts, bruises, bumps, that kind of thing? Maybe it's everything. Yeah, how do you really measure damage besides, you know, what what you're really seeing? Because another thing, like when you kick somebody and you hear that slap, immediately you think, oh, that must have hurt. But that's just the skin slapping. What, the ones that hurt are the ones you don't hear, you know? Mm. Or, or, I mean, you might hear it, but then you've got, you've got to see them, like, Go like that. You know, they got they wince. They they and then they keep their arm down because they're because they're guarding that area. You know. To me, it was no questions. James Kraus is uh, you know the winner of that fight. The judges surprisingly had the same uh, had had the same thoughts there, which gets us mm. to our semifinals now, Ted. And there's no one left from Team No Love. And uh, right. did you like these matchups? I mean, we have Diego Lima versus Toothless Tom. And uh, Jesse Taylor versus James Krause. Did you agree with that, or uh, you know, how did you really want that to uh, go? You know, with those four fighters left there. Um. Well, you you know, it would be kind of an interesting fight. <clears throat> Jesse Taylor versus Tom Galicio would be interesting because Galicio is is a uh, is a submission guy, and Taylor is a wrestler. So. What what cancels you know if Taylor gets a takedown then you've got Galicio who can use his jujitsu so you know what I mean uh, or or would that be would that be a boring fight you know what I mean you you, you wonder would would that be a a very exciting fight on the ground you know a human chess match or would it make for a boring fight um, you know I I think uh, and I'd be interested but looking at them the way they are. How is uh, how is James Krause's takedown defense? I wonder. You know, um, didn't really. I mean, you had Nijum, who is who's a well-rounded guy, but he's not he's not a wrestler by trade, and he was able to take Krause down. So I'm kind of worried uh, for James Krause in that matchup with with Jesse Taylor. Um, you know, and then you've got you've got uh, Diego Lima who. Um, Although he he is a uh, is he a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt? I know I mean he's he's Brazilian, but just being Brazilian doesn't automatically mean you're 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 great on the ground. Yeah. Um, because I know he you know in, in in the previous Ultimate Fighter, you know he he made it to the finals, right? And he fought Eddie Truck Gordon, and uh, those two guys brawled, and it and it was Gordon who came out on top. So, um, you know, it makes you wonder what uh, you know. How is Lima gonna gonna go at this one? Is he gonna, is he gonna take a uh, you know a different pathway? Is he is he gonna try a different um, game plan? You know, I, I agreed with these matchups. I really couldn't see Jesse Taylor versus Tom, but you did make a good point with that. Like, how would that go? And then Lima versus Kraus. That's that's an exciting fight. But Lima versus Tom Galicio. That's my favorite out of these two here. I think that's gonna yeah, really bring the okay. action. You know, and you brought up a great point with, uh, you know, Jesse's takedowns and Kraus not really being able to defend them, especially against an elite wrestler. And I'm not saying anything. I'm not trying to bash or throw shade on Kraus. He's been an amazing fighter this season, really impressive, um, re really showing an art to, to his jabs, especially, I, I thought. But 
if you look at tonight's fights, Kraus really relied on those takedowns getting uh, Ramsey down. He's not going to be able to do that against Jesse Taylor. So, you know, I, I see Jesse winning against Kraus. Mm -hmm. And then Lima versus Tom Galicchio. Man, I don't know what to think about that. That's just... I, that's going to be exciting is all I can say. I could probably see Diego winning that. But Tom, man, he's a dangerous man doing a lot better than he did on season 22. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards Lima as well. I was just talking with Ann, uh, who was Ann checking in. in. Yeah, so I said uh, Jesse could go all the way. It'll probably be Jesse versus Lima in the finals. Yeah, you think? Uh, yeah, that's that's that. Yeah, that's my prediction. That, that's yeah. what I'm, yeah, I'm leaning I'm towards. That. But you know What's what? That? You know what kind of throws me off is afterwards they do the tough talk. The very first time that Tom Galicchio won that fight, I forgot who he beat. Uh, Eddie Truck Gordon didn't he beat Eddie Truck in his in his very first fight? I think fight? so. Yeah. yeah, shocked everybody. He he kind of seemed mm -hmm. super excited about it, and maybe he's the one that made it to the finals. I don't know. Just based off on you know how I am. You know, I tell everybody, wait for the weigh-ins. Wait to see, like, where their heads are at, where their energy is at. Just based off where Tom, you know, where his energy is, the things that he's saying. Um, you know, going on vacation with a girl, getting the extra money from the finishes. I think Tom might win it, but I really am rooting for Diego. I can't see him winning. Um, I don't want anyone to think I'm biased because I've had him on my show before because I teched with him or he's always tweeting with us. But I, that's the way I see it going, Ted. I got to agree with you. I see Lima versus Taylor mm -hmm. in the finals. Wow. So then, so then Diego Lima will be the first guy ever to reach the tough finals twice, right? Wow. I didn't even, I didn't even think about that. Well, I don't, Jesse, I don't think anyone's ever done that before. Hasn't Jesse made it to the finals before too, or no? He was kicked no, off. Well, no, but... because he never did because he because he screwed up the night before, so he never did make it to yeah. the finals. Yeah. But he beat everybody on the season that he was on. He beat everybody. He he was he was he was this close. He was this close. Oh my god. Yeah, what a story. What a story. You know, what I mean, just just through his own stupidity. Um, I mean, so no, I mean, I, honestly, he would he would probably admit that too. I mean, Someone you know, with the he, boys moment, you know. Someone hey, with you the with the boys. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, need a sexy Lexi. Oh, you made mine really strong. The bump and iron. <laughs> But you know what, Ted? If it goes to Lima versus Taylor, how do you see that going? Do you see it going to decision? Do you see a finish? Do you see a submission? Do you see a knockout? Because let's not forget, Lima's the youngest one on this season. He's my age, 28 years old. Taylor's a little bit older, but he seems better than ever right now to me. At least he seems focused. He realizes what he needs to do, and it kind of reminds me of an Eddie Alvarez when he got brought to the UFC not too long ago. He realized what I need to do to get to the championship fight is use what got me to the got me to the dance. My wrestling. I'm pushing guys up against the cage like Showtime Pettis. Taylor's doing the same thing, and he's doing it beautifully. Taking guys out in the first round like he did tonight. Lima, on the other hand, he's putting on exciting fights, but they seem very close that could go either way. I don't know, man. I'm gonna ask you first. Uh, you know, Lima or Taylor here, and how do you see it going? Sorry, it was just uh, uh, I just responding here. Um, okay, what's going to, on? To uh, a four G beast, I, I I was just giving him the update because he was four uh, G. He was good, asking uh, cell phone oh. service. <laughs> what's that? I said four G. He must have some great cell phone service. <laughs> the four G beast. Yeah, he calls himself the four G beast. Um, all right, so you want you wanted to know Eddie, uh, my pick for if if if. It's going to be Jesse Taylor versus Diego Lima in the finals. Who would then win? Oh, my God. Um, I mean, phew, wow. Perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. Jeez. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with, uh, with Taylor, but by decision. Because really? Lima's tough and... and uh, I mean, we, we've seen him get finished with strikes, but uh, Taylor's not that kind of guy. Uh, so I, I see him, uh, you know, getting a, uh, getting a unanimous decision win and, and being the, uh, the champion of uh, tough redemption. Hmm. Oh, hey, let's, uh, let, do you want to go? Let's, let's jump right into, if you don't mind, Eddie, uh, Connor versus, versus Floyd, because we got the 4G beast. Um, Asking me, asking us about this, 
And that was that was the other topic that we wanted to talk about. Okay, wait, really quick. Last question. Out of five stars, we have to do it every episode. Out of five stars, rate it really quick. I'm giving tonight's episode four just based on the excitement from the fights. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to see some exciting fights. The redemption season. There were redemption fights. I'm giving it four to five stars. Ted, really quick, what did you give it? Uh, I mean, based on the way that I've scored other other uh, other episodes, of four point five. Okay, all right. Let us know what you guys think on Twitter at Pure Evil in Maine, also at Ted Check. That's T E D C Z E C H. All right, so let's jump into the biggest headline, which actually was announced on my birthday, Ted, June fourteenth, which actually went down this week. Twenty eight. I'm an old man, I know, but Ted. Oh, get out of here! First take. I'm giving over to you. Long What's going on in the chat room here? Well, they, they they want us to talk about uh, they want us to talk about Floyd versus uh, versus Connor. Let's do it. May Mac, where, however you want to put it, Connor McGregor versus uh, Floyd Mayweather. They want us to talk about that. So uh, yeah, we might as well. Uh, oh, and Anne, Anne gives the show four out of five stars. Uh, great fights tonight, she says. I agree. So um, yeah, I, I mean, I just you know, um, I think it's going to be the biggest fight of the century. I, I mean, a big biggest fight. In, in all of combat sports, I, I think they're probably going to sell it for a uh, hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. I'm gonna I'm gonna say a hundred dollars. The uh, they're they're gonna break the record for the uh, not necessarily attendance, you know, because it's gonna be at the was it the MGM or whatever whatever the the arena is there in in Las Vegas that it only holds like twenty thousand people, but they'll they'll break the gate because. The ringside seats are going to be like a hundred grand, you know. Um, so they'll break the gate record. They'll break the pay-per-view record that was set by uh, Pacquiao and, and Mayweather. So those are my predictions. What's that? W- without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they'll, they'll break all the records that they can break. Um, so uh, it, it, uh, you know, I mean, because they've got, uh, they're, they're pulling from the boxing crowd. The MMA crowd, and then somebody else made this point. There's there's a there's another group, and we don't even know how big this group is, but there's a third group of people that are just going to get caught up in the hype. Like, they're, maybe they're not even really sports fans. They're just pop culture people, right? I met but a they're lot of them this weekend fans. that thought, I didn't even bring up that I cover MMA. There were just so many people at the bar talking about it. It just sounded like idiots. Right. <laughs> right. Well, that's but the, those idiots are going to buy it too. Yeah. They're just they're just people that are they're they're fair weather fans or they they just get caught up in the they're hype beasts and they're going to get caught up in it and uh, and and buy it too just because everybody else is. Yeah. You know what I mean? They they they're you know okay. God bless them. God love them. But uh, so they they'll jump on this just for this one because it, because everybody's talking about it like well, us. How can't you, Ted? I got to ask you this, and I want to ask the chat room this: the UFC can't mess us up. Boxing, you have Michael Buffer, UFC, you have Bruce Buffer. Wouldn't it be right. perfect if Bruce Buffer announced Connor and Michael Buffer announced Floyd? How can they not do that? Well, uh, no, I, I think it would be great. I think it would be great. But it just seems as though um, the UFC is rolling over on everything else. Like, d- you did, you, did, you, uh, did you notice that, uh, did you hear this guy Ellerby? I forget his first name. But he's he's uh, he's Floyd Stooge. He's he's the he runs uh, he's the president of the Mayweather m- money team or whatever the heck you want to call it. He said, "Nope, there aren't going to be any other MMA fighter versus boxer fights on the card. It's going to be 100 percent pure boxers." Okay, that's that's number one. So so to me, the UFC relinquished control. They said, "Go ahead, do with it what you want." Right. That's one thing. Another thing is. Uh, if there if there are any MMA announcers, they've really been pushed to the side. I I, I saw the the broadcast team in it. I don't know if there if there's anybody you know from the UFC that's on that broadcast team. I think it's it's Showtime people. It's so weird. You and know they're, what? They're, they're, they're boxers. They're they're boxing announcers. There should be an option. You should be able to either listen to the boxing commentating or the regular what we're used to the UFC commentating, which would be you know Joe Rogan or or whoever. You know, I, the, I guess the, I guess the they figure well, it is a boxing match, so you should have true. boxing people talking about it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it just seems as though the UFC said, 
Like if I if I was negotiating, I would say, well, you know what? I want I want half the card. Let's make it fun. Yeah, let's make it. Let's fun. make it. Let's make it. Let's make it. Let's make it fair. I want half the card. Um, either you know, so so make it half boxing and half MMA, or do do the whole card as one side MMA, one side boxing. Because um, who, who was it? Adrian Broner wants to fight Nate Diaz now. Yeah. Um, Stipe Miocic challenged Anthony Joshua. Jimmy Manuel wanted to fight David Hay. Um, and uh, who, who was the other one? Um, oh, of course, Anderson Silva's wanted to fight Roy Jones Jr. for like forever. So th- there you go. There's your undercard. If you wanted, you could do it that way. You know, Ted, it just if seems like any. Rolling over. What's if, that? If there's any time to do this and have fun with that, I mean, this is the ultimate guys' night out. This is one of the biggest fights we might ever see. This is a fight that we're going to be telling our grandchildren about. And uh, if there's any time to do it, it's now. Silva versus whoever he wants is something that he's been talking about forever. You know, why not make it fun? I mean, we're already kind of stepping outside the box. But then again, right. you know what? There has been no fights yet announced other than Connor versus Floyd here. And it's up to the Mayweather uh, promotions to uh, pick that out. But I have to exactly and it say, make, make this fun. Make this fun. This is a once-in-a-lifetime thing, something you'll never forget. It won't be fun. It won't. It won't be fun. Uh, no, it won't. I mean, I mean, look, and I like boxing, but but uh, I, I think maybe it's a tactical move by the UFC because they figure – there aren't going to be that many people watching the undercard anyway. You know, it's it's going to be uh, like a Tyson fight. You just tune in for the tight. You tune in for well, hopefully it'll go longer than thirty seconds. But you know, um, you know, you 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 know, forget about the undercard and you just watch the Tyson fight. I think I think that's what they're thinking. Um, but I mean, but I do remember Dana White a while back saying that uh, that he was going to. He said, "And we're going to stack this thing with other with other uh, exciting fights." So it sounded like at one point he wanted to have at least he had the desire to have a hand in the rest of the fights. But it seems like they just said, go ahead, you know, you know, uh, we're going to bend the knee and you have control. You know, and I just don't I don't agree with that. I don't like that, you know, um, but whatever. I, we don't know. I don't know what went on behind closed doors. You know, another very interesting point, Ted, that, uh, you know, Connor doesn't have to wear Reebok. He is open to anyone that wants to sponsor him. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, great. I mean, he, he might end up, he, he could probably uh, approach Reebok and say, look, I, I am, uh, you know, with this boxing match, I, I'm open to any and all sponsors. Make me an offer. So so renegotiate with Reebok just for this fight alone. Same thing with Monster. He has, he has an exclusive Monster contract. Renegotiate with Monster. Just, just for this fight, plus any other huge, you know, how about other UFC sponsors like Bud Light, Harley, um, you know, any of those other big ones, you know what I mean? Um, and, and McGregor can, or uh, uh, Mayweather can go with Hublot, whatever the hell Hublot is. <laughs> or, or uh, actually, I looked it up. Yeah. I, I believe it's pronounced, I, I believe it's pronounced Kublo. It's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's uh, they make watches. Yeah, I know, I know. Who blow? Who blow? Who blow? Who? Who blow? Who? <laughs> yeah, I know. No, no, no. I, I think they make watches that are like supposed to be, you know, on the level with Rolex or whatever. Who blow in a house with a mouse? Not with a fox. Not with a watch. <laughs> who blow? Who? <laughs> who blow? Who? Um, yeah, no. I, I, I think, I think actually they make you know like three hundred thousand dollar watches or what have you know. So Ted, the big question here is. What is going to happen in this fight? Like I said, I went to the bar this weekend. It was my birthday. I've been partying all week long, as you can tell. I'm drinking out of a nice crystal crystal wine glass. It's I see that. Crazy. I complimented you on that, man. Yeah. It's been a crazy week, man. I've been trying to go out and, and kind of talk about this without telling people I cover MMA, this and that. I kind of want to hear what other people are thinking that really aren't into the scene. Everyone doesn't think Connor has a chance. No one thinks Connor has a chance. I got to object, man. I think Connor can do it, man. I really do. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I I've, I've been you know reading other people's comments, and there's there's different philosophies on how people think Connor should approach this. Okay. Some people think he should take uh, the uh, I guess it was a guy named Madonna 
who who fought uh, who fought Floyd and and was um, made it a dirty, ugly fight. You know, a lot of clinching, leaning on him, trying to trying to wear him out, wear him down. Dirty boxing, you know, digging into the ribs, maybe you know, short uppercuts in the clinch, things like that. You know, rabbit punches, stuff like that. Right? That's that's one that's one philosophy. Then the, then there's another one that that actually said no no no, he should see Floyd is a counter counter puncher. He waits for you to make your move and then he makes his move, and he, and he you know because of his speed, that's how he he you know he he scores points on you. So other people are saying, no, 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 Connor, because of his length um, and, and, well, they're just saying Connor needs to do what Floyd does. So be patient and wait for Floyd to make the first move. So we can end up seeing two guys circling for 10 rounds. We can see another anybody. Pacquiao Mayweather. <laughs> right, but, but they're saying the philosophy, is, the, the idea is Connor actually adopts Floyd's style and and waits for Floyd to make the first move, and then is the is the counter striker. Um, well, and the, oh, the other the other thought is that he should just um, ju- just just try to get just try to knock him out, like just 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 bum rush him, and just try to knock him out, like when the, within the first round, With that just overwhelm, just, just like run after him, run after him, cut the ring off, corner him, and just unload and try just try to get him out. In the first round, so it's kind of three three schools of thought on that. So let me um, ask you. you I, know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, how how do you personally see this going? I mean, I know there's a little time. Oh, not even that much time. But how, how do you see this fight going? Ah, uh, so so I, yeah, so I um. I don't know. I don't know what style Connor is going to to adopt. Um, you know what I mean? I I just don't know. Oh, here's another. Let me just throw this out there before I before okay. I actually make a prediction. Okay, so you know how Connor's been putting out like little videos. That, you know, he sparred a guy who's like number twenty in the world or whatever. Do you think? Do you think that Connor is only showing us a fraction of what he's really capable of? And that it's all actually kind of a ruse to lull Mayweather into thinking that Connor actually really is not that great, so that he underestimates Connor, and and then uh, Connor gets in the ring and just totally, you know, shocks the shit out of him. Because Connor's in control of of those videos, like he's got his own um, documentary team, and you know he's the one that's the that's releasing those those videos. He's he's in charge of you oh, know. I get what you're saying. The the footage that come that you see the footage that you see of Connor boxing is what Connor has chosen to show us. He's a smart dude, man. It wouldn't Are we only me. seeing this much? Are we only seeing this much of what he's capable of? And 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 that's all that that Floyd really has to go on. Um, or or Floyd can choose to to watch the 13 second knockout of Jose Aldo. Uh, but. Um, which over which shows and over, and over and over and over and over yeah, and over yeah. and, and, and you can you can tell a couple of things by that you can see Connor with knockout power and also Connor taking a shot at the same time because because uh, we know that uh, that Aldo landed on Connor just about at the same time that Connor landed on Aldo and, and Connor took that shot um, so uh, you know may, maybe maybe I don't know maybe I'm giving Connor too much credit. But possibly he's only giving us this much of what he's capable of. That's a good point, Dad. And you know what? It wouldn't surprise me because Connor's a genius from, you know, the press conferences to everything that he does, every post, everything that he says, it's genius. And there's a lot of thought that goes into it. So that really wouldn't surprise me. But if Mayweather to watch anything, who's the number one or who's the most impressive boxer Connor really has ever faced? It's Nate Diaz who actually trained with a bunch of boxers. Right, that's true. That's good, 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 good point. Yep, yep. You know, Connor didn't. I mean, well, well. Honestly, 
if you compare Nate Diaz to Mayweather, it's completely different because, you know, Nate's really lanky. But Connor got bitch slapped a few times in that fight, but that's not really Mayweather's style. So you can't really watch any of his MMA fights. It's a different sport. Um, right. You know, and only thing that he's releasing are these little short videos. So it kind of would make sense that Connor is kind of tricking him. But at the same time, Ted, it wouldn't be smart for Mayweather to watch any video like like that of Connor. You know, it, it wouldn't be smart at all. Mayweather has been doing this for so long. Um, I think right. Connor's Connor's going to find a little problems. You know, Connor's going to find a lot of problems in this fight. But he's so smart that he can psych Floyd out. You know. Yeah. Um, with with these videos, with the press conferences that we haven't seen yet, get under his skin. You know, I think that that plays a huge role in every single one of Connor's fights. A huge mm-hmm. role. Yeah, he's. I mean, he will definitely try. He will. He will definitely try. And I mean, you could argue that he already has because did you see this this video that Floyd put out on his Instagram about we're going to do something called the Mayweather Challenge, which is you show how your life really is. Uh, you know, because he's trying to say, well, I this is my jet and these are my pilots and this is my stretch limo and these are my clothes and this is my watch. Whereas Connor, he didn't mention him by name, but you knew he was talking about Connor. Whereas Connor, you know, rents the cars and rents the house, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's already kind of getting under his skin because Connor has tried to mimic Floyd, uh, and uh, and Floyd is not taking too kindly to that. So he's already Connor's already kind of living up here rent free. You know, I think Connor does. That a... What was Sorry, that? <laughs> I said does that translate. Does that translate to the ring? Like, will that actually have? A psychological effect on Floyd when it when it you know when it comes to fighting. It does in every one of Connor's fights. That's a huge game plan of his. Is outside of the fight is hyping it up in your head. That's your worst. That's everyone's worst enemy. Is the games that you play in your head, the things that you see, what you think about yourself, what people are saying about you. Mayweather has an ego, and Connor can play right into that. And I feel like when we see the press conferences. And let me tell you, they're going to be some of the most exciting press conferences we've probably ever seen. I'm looking forward to it. But we haven't really seen any shit talking, really. I think that's going to play a huge role in this fight. I could definitely see it going to uh, a finish. I don't see this going to a decision. I see a finish here. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, check out, uh, I don't know if it's at Straight Blast Gym or wherever Connor's training. There's a mural on the, on the wall, and it's Connor punching... A black dude. Uh, I'm guessing it's Floyd or Marcus Brimage. <laughs> or it I guess Marcus it could Brimage. be Brimage, but they but they have boxing gloves on. They don't they don't have uh, UFC MMA gloves on. They have boxing gloves. And Connor's got green gloves, and the other guy's got red gloves. Uh, so um, I think that's a message to Floyd as well. And, and I, I can guarantee you, Floyd's seen that. Without you know? a doubt, Ted. Without a doubt. And like I was just saying. I'm kind of excited to see this press conference, how that's really going to play out. Like I said, it has a big role to do with it. But another thing, Ted, that hasn't been announced, they really didn't announce what these guys are really getting paid, which I kind of find surprising. Originally, Connor wanted $75 yeah. million. We were getting uh, Floyd was getting $150 million. We didn't even get like a 60-40. Uh, you know, no, no one told us anything about what these guys got paid, except they're both happy, you know. Well, yeah, according to Dana White, uh, yeah, that, that Connor's Connor's happy with with the arrangement, um, but uh, yeah, I'm sure Floyd is going to have to get more. You know what I mean? He always has to get more. Um, again, ego. What's it's his ego. In, what's going on in our chat room here? What's everybody saying here? Uh, Anne is saying, uh, oh, Anne, like the the who blows who thing. Um, that's Floyd's, uh, you know, Floyd sponsor the 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 who blow. Um, and, uh, she said a shout out to her. Oh, shout out to her neighbors. Okay. Or say, say she wants us to say a shout out to her neighbors. Uh, so the neighbors can, can hear, hear it. What's going shout on? And neighbors. Oh no. Shout, shout out to Ann. Hey, Ann. Hey, shout Anne, out. what's going on? Ann? shout oh, out Anne. to me. So my neighbors can hear you. Okay. Hi, Ann. What's going on? Ann? Anne. we're shouting all the way from the East coast. Pure so can you hear us over there in Oregon? Pure evil and and big shout out to Mike. Big supporters, guys. Make sure you follow me and Ted on Twitter. And you can also follow 
and at chillzone95 on Twitter. You can follow Ted at Ted Check. That's T E D C Z E C H. And of course, me, Evil Eddie, at Pure Evil MMA. Ted, are there any questions in there about this fight? Anyone seeing this fight going to decision? What's going on in there? Well, Ann, think, Ann seems to think that maybe Nike would be interested in in sponsoring Connor. Uh, and then she also said that possibly I could be right that uh, that Connor's on, only releasing little bits like of his boxing so that Floyd won't take him seriously. There's there's a That's, lot uh, that goes I, I don't in. Know. And this is no secret to anybody, Ted. Me and you have both discussed this plenty of times. Huge game plan of Connor is outside of the ring. You know, playing these mind games. Only person didn't work against was who? Nate Diaz. Right, right. Yeah, and it, it, it really didn't. Um, I mean, who who's to know for sure? But uh, I mean, yeah, yeah Nate, Nate's a hard nut to crack. You know that that dude's uh, he's from the street, so you know, you, you, yeah, you're, you're not going to really uh, bust through that uh, that exterior, but. Um, yeah, with with, uh, with Floyd uh, and his fragile ego, um, you, you wonder what what Connor's going to do, what what he's going to say, and um, when is this press conference anyway? Do you do we have a date for it? You know, there's a lot of people that want the world tour, but I heard they're just going to do you know a couple of cities because uh, there's not much time. There's not much time for them to really no, do really a world isn't. tour or anything. Yeah, no, there really isn't, and and Connor's not going to be interested in that because he's going to be like, no, dude, I got to train. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, I mean, it wouldn't it be great if, if we did? You know, it would be like uh, like Connor versus Aldo all over again. Remember when they did that 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 world? Oh, that was a thing of, that was a thing of beauty right there. It, uh, oh my God, that just that was that was masterful. The way that, the way they that he just he had Aldo reduced to like a a steaming lump of humanoid goo. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He just, oh my God, he, he really did. He, he did a number on that guy's brain. Um, so anyway, uh, okay, so I'm just thinking about the way, you know, the way that Connor moves when he, when he fights and he, you know, he's about the movement, he loads. you know, he, he's about it. I think he's just going to, he's going to kind of keep that to some degree when he boxes, he's, he's going to, he's going to push forward, push forward, you know, um, and, uh, you know, faints and, and, you know, Hands here, hands there, you know, kind of, kind of stuff. Maybe out to the side. Maybe, maybe try to try to slap him or whatever. Well, you can't really slap with a boxing glove, but you know, um, well, he'll maybe, judge. maybe, maybe even, maybe even fake in a takedown. Maybe kind of get get down low, like he's gonna, like he's gonna do a takedown or something. You know what I mean? Just, just to freak him out. He's always double jabbing the right, pretending, and then he'll hit you with that left, and it drops everyone, man. But so the, I, th I think he's going to do that. I think he's going to be aggressive. I don't. I don't think he can. I don't think Connor is wired. You know, like some people are saying, oh, he should be a counter. He should counter strike Floyd. He's just not wired that way. You know, he's going to push forward, push forward, push forward, and probably uh, try to get Floyd to make a mistake, and then and then seize upon that. I think a lot of Connor's fights, man. He's not looking for takedowns. He's always trying to get him on the feet. Yeah. This is going to be an exciting fight. But you know what, Ted? There's a lot of people that aren't for this. I mean, oh, I know. Could be they'll fake watch no it anyway, though. They'll, they'll watch it. You know they will. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Whether you they love it, hate it, it you're going to watch it. Or you're at least going to want to know who won it, at least. Yeah. But the thing is, there's so many people that are totally against this, and it's, uh, it's mostly the boxing fans out there. I'm not trying to bash boxing fans, but I can kind of see where they're coming from. Floyd, 49-0. If he gets, if he loses to a guy who's zero and zero in boxing, it's a disgrace. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can but you imagine? I'll tell you what. It will put a lot of things to rest here. If if Floyd finishes Connor, could you imagine if Floyd finishes Connor? That would, that would be a huge defeat to the MMA world. Would it hurt? Would it? Would this fight affect the MMA world if Connor does get knocked out? Which I don't really see happening. Well. <sighs> I don't think so. I don't, I don't think it will uh, because Connor is going into Floyd's backyard. Yeah. So he gets he gets props right there. He gets points right there. Okay. We know without a doubt Floyd would never ever in his life step foot in the octagon. He would never do it. So it's a big risk for Connor. Okay. Uh, but Connor wants to do it because Connor wants to, you know, as Ric Flair would say, to be the man, you got to beat the man. 
you know, you have to kill the king. Um, and so he's going to do that. The only way that Connor will be known as the greatest uh, combat sports athlete in the world is to beat the guy that's there right now, which is Floyd. The guy, the guy that Connor has modeled himself after, you know, the, the cars, the house, the, the, the clothing, the, the watches, the ego. all that stuff. What's that? The ego. The ego. He Connor has to be his own himself. promoter. Exactly. Connor has followed the blueprint that Floyd has created, and, and now he's at the point where he wants to usurp the king. He wants to be the king now. So you've got to beat the king at his own game, not not at, you know because if Floyd got into the octagon people and lost, people would say, "Well, that's because it's mixed martial arts," and and Floyd ain't no mixed martial artist. But Connor, a guy who's O and O, he goes into the boxing ring, he goes into uncharted territory, and beats the top guy, a guy who's forty nine and O, regarded as the best in the world, uh, one of the best of all time. If he can do that, if he can pull that off. That's just amazing. But but if he loses, like, you know, back to your question. If he loses, yeah, it's it's embarrassing. But he can go right back to mixed martial arts. You know what I mean? Yeah, the boxing people will be like, oh, MMA sucks, MMA, Connor sucks, MMA sucks, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, fine. Go go back to your world, and then we've got ours over here. The, you know, the two, are, the two are, are coming together for this fight, but they're separate otherwise. See, you know, so that? we'll just... We'll, Go on our merry way. To me, in my honest opinion, all the pressure is on Floyd Mayweather. And I think that's going to really build a nest in, in, in Floyd's head. You know, there's a lot of pressure. He really wants to be 50-0. and 0. He came out of retirement for this fight. Connor really doesn't have anything to lose here. He's making a ton of money. You know, right. one of the biggest fights of our generation. One, that, one of the big, most anticipated fights we're ever going to see. The most exciting pressers. Connor really has nothing to lose here. Connor's done it, and if he gets the win over Floyd Mayweather, you know he deserves a, a statue in every state, in every country. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. A Absolutely. man that went to two divisions, the first and two divisions in the UFC to hold two belts, two different weight classes, go over to beat the one of the best in boxing. Something that Pacquiao couldn't do. Something that. Uh, Canel Alvarez couldn't do. You know, the list goes on and on. Connor has nothing to lose. The pressure is on Floyd. And how is this really going to affect Floyd? Because if we look back at Floyd's past couple of fights, which I've watched, there's really no pressure on Floyd. I mean, despite he really, you know, is trying to be undefeated, he's trying to stay undefeated, blah, blah, blah. But no one's really given him any problems, you know, before the fights. Connor, you know, let's look at RDA. RDA didn't realize what he was getting himself into. Even though they didn't have fight. You know, the first time he showed up, he just looked like an idiot. This is going to be exciting. connor has got nothing to lose. Floyd's got the pressure here. And I'm excited for this one here. Good good points there, Eddie. Good points. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I, I think, yeah, you, you, you really summed it up well. I mean, um, we'll, we'll just have to. Neil, I'll just put another nail in the coffin. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, you know. You know, it was a big deal, Ted. Uh, 50 and 0 oh, absolutely. against a guy who's 0 and 0 embarrassing. Yep. Um I mean yeah, Connor Connor can just uh can just continue on. Connor yeah, you know what? Uh Connor doesn't even actually really need this fight. You know what I mean? He can just continue it now. I mean, is he going to get a payday like this fight? No. But he can he can continue on as UFC lightweight champion. And he can continue to fight by fight, ratchet up his his asking price, and um, you know he, he can go on his merry way making money. But Floyd Mayweather needs this fight because, first of all, I mean, yeah, he could he could continue to to hand pick opponents or whatever, but this is the biggest fight that Floyd can get. Floyd needs Connor more than Connor needs Floyd, honestly. I agree, Ted. Because Connor can keep going on. Connor can Connor can uh, can can drop the, the the lightweight belt and go after the welterweight belt if he wants. Then he'd be the first guy to have three belts. You know, um, there's other things. There's still other uh, ways to, uh, to legacy points, if you will, that Connor can hit within mixed martial arts. So he really doesn't need this fight, other than it's it's going to be worth 
however many UFC fights. You know what I mean? Money wise, it's great, but other than that, he doesn't need it. Ted, I'm gonna. But there's my... nobody out there. Who Floyd can fight. There's no. There's nobody of any. Well, I mean, some people are saying, oh, you know, Floyd could get the winner of Triple G versus Canelo. Which is yeah, a good but, point. Yeah, yeah, but it still doesn't equal Conor. No, it doesn't. It, it, doesn't. it still doesn't equal Conor. Well, you know what? You know? In, the, in the defense, Canelo was a lot younger when he fought Floyd. That was kind of the fight that put him into the scene to kind of give him the recognition. But there is no other fight. I mean, Conor can go fight Nate. He can go fight Tony Ferguson, Habib, or Woodley. So it's, it's limitless. Conor's he having the time of his life. Yeah, GSP. It's limitless here, man. He's got nothing to lose here. Ted, I know it's getting late here, but we have one more topic to discuss, guys. I, w- I really want to hear what you guys think about Conor versus Floyd. Ted does, too. Let us know on Twitter, at Pure Evil MMA, and also at Ted Check. That's T-E-D-C-Z-E-C-H. Ted, I think it's very important that we cover this, this <clears throat> next topic here. Chris Cyborg versus Megan Anderson. And before we talk about that, do you think it was right for uh, Jermaine Durand and me to get stripped of her title? I mean, it hasn't been a year. You know what I mean? Do you think that was right, first off? I know she was kind yeah. of running from Cyborg, some may say, but was that right? Yes, it was. She's, she's a duck. Quack, 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 quack. She was ducking Cyborg. Um, this whole talk about, uh, well, first of all, if you go back to, to the Holly fight, uh, she said something about, I have a hand injury. Uh, and and then she and then I think it was at the uh, the presser she said, but I think I should rematch Holly. Well, which is which is it? Do you need to take time off for the hand in the hand injury, or or do you, or do you want to fight Holly? Which is it there? So that was questionable. Uh, then she's saying I don't want to fight Cyborg because she's a known cheater. It's like yeah, but you know what? You were kind of a cheater too. Uh, twice in the Holly fight, you hit her after the bell. So why don't we just call it even? And you fight Cyborg. But she refused to do it. So if you're going to refuse to fight the number one contender, in my opinion, you don't deserve the belt. Whoop! Just take it away. Sorry. And you know what, Ted? I agree. I agree and disagree about the whole cheating thing. I mean, she's calling Cyborg a cheater. But at the same time, it was up to the ref to kind of get in between. But after the second time she did it, it kind of did leave a salty taste in everybody's mouth. You have to fight the number one contender, especially you knew what you were getting yourself into. After this Holly fight, who did you think was next? You know, and I inter- I got the I had the right. pleasure of interviewing Jermaine Durandamy before her fight with Holly Holm. We spoke for an hour and a half. Um, you know, this kind of seemed like her dream fight. She's never seen the UFC title before in person. She beats Holly Holm. She gets it strapped around her. I kind of felt like she was you know, satisfied with that. And like you said, after the Holly Holm fight, she didn't have any interest in it. Instead of hyping it up, she was like, oh, you know, my hand. But then, like you said, Ted, she was like, well, I'll fight Holly again. So that's kind of like, come on here, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you have to fight who they put in front of you. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, you know, if, if you're if you're if you're a uh, if you're a proven champion, if you have clout, you know, say say you make like five title defenses or whatever, uh, then then you might be able to call your shots a little bit with the UFC. You might you might be able to say, I'll fight this person. You know what I mean? But uh, but but you've got to put your time in. You you've got to mow down uh, some you know a significant portion of the competition first. Um, you know before you can do that kind of stuff. So she's just right out of the gate. She just gets the belt under controversial circumstances, and she's saying she doesn't want to fight Cyborg, who's the number one contender. I, I mean, it, it, originally they were going to have Cyborg fight, but Cyborg wanted to fight in March, and they said, no, 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 we want, we want it in February, so that's why they chose Holly and GDR. They tried twice so with Cyborg. Really, what's that? They tried twice to make a match for Cyborg before yeah. they made the Holly vs. GDR. Yeah, and GDR. she was saying, ah, you know, I got health problems. Can, can we make it March? And, and you know, they, they didn't, for whatever reason, the UFC wasn't going, wasn't going to work with her on that. And that's up to them. Whatever, that, that's their thing. Um, apparently, they, they felt some, some type of reason to, 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 you know, to get it going. And um, so GDR had to know. Shit, they were basically forming this this uh, this division around Cyborg, and okay, yeah, she got busted for roids, great. But since that, t- you got to know that Usada is going to be on her ass. So let that be Usada's problem. 
Let that be the UFC's problem. Don't you worry about Cyborg and whether she's still cheating or not. Just worry about fighting her. You know what I mean? So it's, it's unfortunate, but uh, yeah, I think it had to be done. You know, and with Megan Anderson, man, you know, this is something that could have happened in Victor. Of course, it wouldn't have the spotlight. It does now. But I do have to say this. Is the UFC really just going to start picking people instead of just building up this division the right way? They're just picking people out. It's, it's not that exciting to me. And I really think that GDR versus Cyborg would have probably been a, a more exciting fight and no shade thrown at Megan. I love Megan. I really do. But I think that GDR had a, had a better chance of winning against Chris Cyborg. Let's look back at Cyborg. GDR is a Muay Thai fighter. Cyborg's lost against Zarina Bars, who's friends with GDR, who actually used to work together at uh, mm -hmm. as, as security. You know, th these two could work together, find the weaknesses. What were the weaknesses? It was the knees. It was the lankiness in the fight against Jarena Bars. You guys can all go look on YouTube, type in uh, Jarena Bars versus Chris Cyborg, Lion Fight, and you can see that fight. Uh, Jarena Bars destroyed Cyborg, dropped her multiple times in that fight. You never seen that yeah. ever before. I think GDR had a great chance of actually beating Cyborg, and that would have really done it for her. Instead of her leaving the 145 pound division or even the UFC or MMA as, you know, that salty taste in everybody's mouth from the Holly Holm fight, she could have really made history by beating Cyborg, defending the title. You know, I think she had a better shot, Ted, than Megan Anderson hmm. would. Good, uh, good, good point there, Eddie. Yeah, um, but instead... GDR says she she wants to return to 135. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's the, yeah. Uh, the other thing about the 145, there yeah there, there is there are no rankings for that, right? They they There's didn't. No one there. You know, like, when, when, right. When they when they established the strawweight division, they pulled a whole bunch of they signed a whole bunch of people from Invicta, but they haven't done the same thing with the 145 pound division. Um, they have they have not pulled a whole bunch of people. What's wrong with your tongue? No, I was going back and forth. Uh, you'll have to watch the show, Ted. I was going back and forth between our uh, our logo with the uh, Evil Eddie cartoon, and then it popped yeah. back to me like this, like the logo. <laughs> Just trust me, Ted. I went to broadcasting school, all right? <laughs> yeah, I got you, man. I got you. What's um, wrong with your tongue? <laughs> what is wrong with that? Put that thing back in your mouth, boy. Um no, but anyway, yeah. So, so they didn't go to, they didn't raid Invicta and get a whole bunch of 145ers there, or look elsewhere in the world, um, and and build a division. So they kind of need to do that uh, soon. But um, I, you know, I, I guess, I guess, I guess we just forget that GDR versus Holly ever even happened. Just wipe that from the record books. We're starting over with Cyborg versus Megan. And you know what, I guess Ted, that's I have to say this. Before we make our predictions on this fight, I'm not excited about it. I'm really not. I wanted to see Amanda Nunes, and I know she's about to fight Valentina, my girl Valentina. But Amanda Nunes for Cyborg, that's the fight to buck, man. That's the fight to buck. Don't don't give me these mm -hmm. Lena Landsberg fights. I'm just telling our <laughs> listeners, you know, let us know what you guys think. Did you want to see Amanda Nunes or, or, or Meekin and Anderson? I mean, honestly. That's that's the fight to buck. That that was the fight to make. And, and Dana White shot Wait, that what, down what immediately. Not, what what fight again? Megan Anderson versus Cyborg. That's exciting, and you know I'm, but not as exciting to me as Amanda Nunes, who's currently the 135 pound champion that recently knocked out Ronda Rousey, and was actually calling out Chris Cyborg. That's the fight I wanted to see, Ted. Do you agree, or or, or what are your thoughts here? Okay, so Amanda Nunes versus Cyborg at 145. Yes, yes. Yeah, sure. there was there was some chalk of that. There was some chalk of that. Um, yeah, and then you could, then you could make GDR versus Valentina Shevchenko at 135. There you go. Muay strikers Muay delight. Hey, strikers delight. Muay Thai huh? versus Muay Thai. Yeah, exactly. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. But you know what, Ted? The the one issue. Everyone knows Cyborg, and this really hasn't been an issue for uh, any of the Cyborg fights because her name alone will bring people to the table. But if you add on the 135-pound champion who just knocked out Ronda Rousey, who's just been knocking out Misha Tate, headlined UFC 200, there's a lot they could have done with that. 
And I don't know why they, they shot that down. I really don't. Why why are you bringing yeah, girls from India? Um, or maybe, maybe you know, they're, they're both uh, from Brazil. Maybe they won't fight each other. A lot of, a lot of Brazilians won't, won't fight each other. Well, Amanda was calling out for this. But, Ted, you know what? Yeah. Honestly, imagine if Cyborg loses to Megan Anderson. I mean... It could happen. It's a mess. It's a mess. And you know what? Dana wants to slam his head into the wall. Ted, last thoughts here really quick. Is this the fight you really wanted to see, though? Well, um, no, I I, I really wanted to see GDR versus Cyborg. That's the one I really wanted to see. That's what we were saying Uh, before. Right, right. So that's that's the fight that, that was going to be signed. That's the fight that I wanted to see. Uh, but... I'll take this one. You know what I mean? I'll take it. I'll roll with it. You know what I mean? I, I don't. I, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I don't know a lot about Megan. I, I haven't watched a lot of uh, tape on her. So uh, I know she's very, very tall, uh, right? She's about six foot, six one, whatever. I mean, like she's a really, really tall, lanky chick. Um, so uh, that's about all I know. And she's from Australia, right? Yeah. Yep. She's from yeah. down under. That's as much. So, Ted, as we get to the end of this episode, we got a lot to look forward to, guys. And I'm sure Ted's going to be talking about it on his channel. And, of course, I'll be talking about it on Pure Evil MMA. We got some exciting fights coming up this weekend between Bellator, NYC, slash 180. And also, the UFC has an upcoming fight with right. Michael Tizay versus Kevin Lee going down June 25th in Oklahoma City. And guess who's going to be there, Ted? One of our soldiers, one of the Czech Republic. Someone who actually does a show himself named Sammy Eid, he'll actually be there. Oh, really? Sammy's going to be there. He, he's from Oklahoma City. He's had these tickets for nice. a while. This is going to be an exciting fight, man. Also on this card, we got uh, Johnny uh, Jimmy Hendrix. We got Johnny Hendrix for your boy Tim Boach. We Jimmy got- Hendrix. <laughs> Purple Hayes. <laughs> and then we also have uh, Felice Herrigs on this card against Kish. Tim Means versus Garcia and BJ Penn. Versus Dennis Seaver. Ted, last question to you. I promise. BJ Penn, man, if he wins or loses, is this the last fight for BJ? Do you want to see this guy fight anymore? Will anything really be gained by beating Dennis Seaver? What are your closing thoughts on this uh, last question here? Uh, well, I mean, BJ Penn, uh, I guess we could say, is now officially part of the Geritol posse. So he needs to be fighting guys. No, that's that's Pat Militich. That's Pat Militich coined that phrase, I think. You know, it's the old timers club, and so uh, th- that's the kind of fighter that uh, that BJ Penn needs to be fighting. Yeah. Not somebody like Yair Rodriguez. Not not a young hotshot, you know, like like Rodriguez. No, he needs to be fighting another old timer like Dennis Seaver. So, uh, oh, Uncle Hank is here, hanging with the boys. <laughs> Sexy Lexi. Um. Yeah, so so this is who he, I mean, you know, BJ, uh, win or lose, he could continue on uh, and just get get another old dude from the fight. And, and that's something that people have brought up. That's something that we've talked about here on Evil Intoxicated about making that uh, you know senior citizen league. But you know what, BJ Penn, this is a perfect fight for him. This was the original matchup. But honestly, Ted, win or lose. This fight's been going under the radar. No, af- since BJ Penn lost the year, no one's really been talking about him. And not to mention, he's on the undercard of a free FS1 card. What? It's it's on the undercard, yeah. It's on the undercard, Ted. This is like the sixth fight. This is the prelim headliner. Oh well, that that's why. They they, they want a strong fight for the for the for the last fight. It is it's on Fight Pass, right? Is it on Fight Pass? I'm pretty sure it's I, UFC Fight Night on FS1. It might be on Fight Pass, though. Oh. They, li- they like—I don't know. I have to look at it, but they like to have a strong fight, you know, with with well-known fighters to be their lead-in to to the uh, to the next level of, uh, you know, to the to the main card. Yeah. Okay. So, so it doesn't it does it kind of doesn't surprise me. I don't know. Well, of course, and, and of course, that's like what they do. But there's so many well-known fighters like Felice Hare, Johnny Hendricks on this card. But under BJ Penn, you have Clay Guida. You have Carla Esparza. You have Daryl Horcher yeah. on this card. A lot of big names. Um, I really would like to see BJ Penn on the main card. Ted, last thing, win or lose, BJ Penn? 
Hmm. Win. He will beat Dennis Seaver. Will beat Dennis Seaver. Even though Dennis Seaver has that brutal kick, I see the same thing going down. Decision or finish? Finish. Finish. I agree. I see a rear naked choke going down on Seaver. Ted, I had a great night tonight. Ultimate Fighter Season 25, Episode 10. Great episode. We want to hear what you guys thought about tonight's episode. Let us know on Twitter at Pure Evil MMA and also at Ted Check. Ted, you know what we like to do here. Closing thoughts here in the chat room. And uh, we're going to sign off on you guys. But, of course, it's all about you guys. So, uh, any questions there in the chat room here? Oh, let's see. Let us see. Oh, uh, Sammy says the prelims are on FS2. Which no okay. one gets, by the way. Yeah, right. You can't even order that. I tried calling Comcast. I put in a complaint, sent a letter. So lame. Um, FS2. Uncle Hank says Felice Herrig loves him. That's awesome. Uh, That's I love that. I wish you go, him. Hank. She's going up against an undefeated fighter, though, against Kish, man. That's going to be a, a crazy one, especially considering uh, Felice's last fight. She was uh, dominant, getting that uh, rear naked choke in the first round. Um, let's see here. Oh, Ann thinks BJ will win. Love it, Ann. And do, 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 do. that's about it, man. You know, Ted, since there are no it. questions in the chat room, um, do you think Daryl Horcher is going to be the same after that motorcycle accident? He is returning to the ring. He's fighting uh, Powell, who trains at American Top Team. And also uh, lost his last fight, but really all he has is kicks. He was a big celebrity on Dana White looking for a fight. Do you see Daryl making the win? He almost beat Habib in that first round. I see it going down. What about you, Ted, before we sign off here? Well, we'll, we'll have to check in with uh, uh, with our friend Jeff. He um, he actually knows Daryl. No so uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll send – yeah. Yeah, so maybe I'll send Jeff um, – Jeff, uh, a message on Facebook tomorrow and, and ask him how, uh, I mean, I would, I would guess that if he's, if he's signed up for a fight, that he's good to go. He's cleared. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that, that's great. I, I'm so happy for him, you know, that he's, uh, um, you know, he fully recovered from that, from that horrific crash. Jeez. Very you know? Nice. You know what, Ted? I really have to thank you and I have to thank our audience tonight. Out of the past couple of weeks, it's been a really rough past couple of weeks. Of course, uh, I broke up with Andrea. There's been a lot going on in my life. But tonight, it's the first time in a couple of weeks, I felt alive. And I have to thank you, Ted, for giving me this moment. And I have to thank our audience out there. Um, I love this. I have such a passion for it. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. It really means a lot, Ted. Thank you for talking to me about this. Yeah, man. This sport has saved my life. And I really hope it saves a lot of other people out there that do suffer for things going on in the world and i really hope they can find peace within the sports the most exciting sport going on in the world right now and what a time to be alive and to be covering this we got mayweather versus mcgregor coming up man ted seriously what thank a time you to so be much for tonight's episode don't worry about it man thank you too it's been great and before we sign off make sure you guys uh follow ted on his youtube channel ted you want to give uh, out your tags real quick just my name, T E D C Z E C H. Um, trying to do more. I I, I kind of took a break uh, for a couple weeks, but uh, I'm back, and uh, so I'll be trying to do as many uh, live broadcasts as I can, and um, you know, just just uh, trying to stay on top of the news. It's uh, it's tough, but uh, I will try to uh, get on top of it, man. <laughs> <laughs> totally. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. This is Evil Intoxicated, episode number 52, covering Ultimate Fighter Season 25, episode 10. After every episode, make sure you guys tune in next Wednesday night at 11 o'clock. I'm Evil Eddie from Pure Evil MMA, from ProofMedia.com and MMA UK. That's Ted Check, the infamous one. Have a great night. Oh, and behave yourselves. <laughs>